this is pretty amazing, uh, right? And it's like, I, I, I've heavy is the burden of consistently being proven correct um, in your suspicions and paranoia. Um, the the Times on Sunday, uh, August 18th, and they, 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 this kind of slipped out rather quietly, although I was all over it. Um, they published this absolutely astonishing article. Uh, Ukraine is invading with British tanks. What does it mean for us? Which sounds like this kind of like informative listicle, um, but actually uh, reveals that the, Ukraine's Kursk invasion, which we spoke about last week, um, which has kind of split Ukraine supporters between, ooh, this is the downfall of Putin, and ooh, this is complete and utter insanity, um, directing Ukraine's best soldiers and uh, expensive Western equipment um, into Russia, where they face almost certain death, while Russia, uh, Russian forces um, uh, continue to advance by the hour in Donbass and are, are close to breaking through every single um, uh, defensive measure that the Ukrainians constructed from 2014 onwards, um, is a British operation. Now, um, it notes uh, that uh, there were a number of... Um, uh, 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 videos and reports that circulated in, 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 on um, uh, earlier at like the start of, of last week, in which the much vaunted but but actually quite rubbish British Challenger two battle tanks were seen very prominently in um, uh, in Kursk. And now I might add that like it's clear that there were direct briefings to the British media on how this is the this is the, this, these are British tanks in Russia, and this is the first time ever that British tanks have uh, been on Russian soil. And so this was clearly like intended to be hyped. Now, the Times makes clear that this was a dedicated strategy by new British Prime Minister Keir Starmer and John Healy, the British Defence Secretary. They've been in office since uh, July when they, they beat the Conservatives in this kind of crushing landslide, um, uh, kind of historic victory that uh, already Keir Starmer is among the, mo the least popular Prime Ministers who's ever been in office. Um, I'm sure it will just get worse and worse. Um, but... Yeah, so in effect, uh, the Times reveals that um, Brit Brit Britain was um, uh, central to the planning of this uh, counter invasion. It states that unseen by the world, British equipment, including drones, have played a central role in Ukraine's new offensive. Uh, British personnel have been closely advising the Ukrainian military on a scale matched by no other country. Now, um, this is pretty astonishing. Um, it gets even more extraordinary, though, because the Times goes into how, yeah, Starmer and Healy have decided to be very overt um, and actively publicize Britain's um, involvement in this ongoing proxy war quagmire in order to try and compel um, Britain's allies to do the same. Um, well, that's, of course, the US and, and uh, European NATO states. Um, and a senior Whitehall source told the newspaper from now on, there will be no shying away from the idea of British weapons being used in Russia as part of Ukraine's defence. We don't want any uncertainty or nervousness over Britain's support. A half-hearted or uncertain response might have indicated that. Um, and it just goes on and on and on about how Britain is like really all in on um, the, uh, uh, the, 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 the proxy war and it intends to... Um, uh, woo, quote unquote, uh, Brit uh, European and North American um, uh, government officials and defense officials into really upping the ante and escalating th th this further from a conflict in which um, the US and its, its international vassals provide an enormous amount of support to Ukraine, but claim that they're not formal belligerents. Um, it, th th these are kind of bold, grand ambitions um, that Britain has, and this follows Keir Starmer um, openly stating at the 75th NATO uh, anniversary summit uh, a few weeks back that he would support Ukraine as long as it takes, sending them billions every year because 
uh, the alternative to Ukrainian victory is unthinkable, which is to say Russian victory. Uh, of course, you know, another alternative to Ukrainian victory is nuclear war, um, which is, you know, not great. But um, apparently that's that's um, uh, less unpleasant than the prospect of Ukraine losing from Starmer's perspective. Now, um, it really there, there's this astonishing um, quote uh, in the article where a, a leading British defence expert, so I'm, I'm sure that they're, they're a smart person, um, told the Times that um, uh, effectively what Starmer is trying to do is bring the Allies slowly but surely along with Britain's leading forward position, because if it looks as if the Brits were too far ahead of their NATO allies, it might be counterproductive. Now, already there are indications that this attempt, this effective British invasion of Kursk has been very counterproductive um, and has boomeranged pretty spectacularly on um, Britain and, and Kiev because it was so openly a proxy strike, um, which was, as we discussed last week, there were British and German tanks in profusion, um, and now we learn that Britain has been um, uh, has orchestrated this and has been supporting this. Um, it's very clear that the US empire and the Biden administration particularly are very, very angry um, yeah. because allegedly they weren't told of the fact that this was planned and that this was going ahead. Um, foreign policy, which is kind of the US empire house journal, uh, states that the Ukraine's uh, incursion to Kursk caught the Pentagon, State Department and White House off guard. They were not warned. They were not consulted. Uh, they were kept out of the loop. Um, and apparently the Biden administration is very skeptical of the military logic behind the counter invasion. Now, on top of it being a clear suicide mission, um, the eagerly advertised presence of Western weapons and vehicles on Western, on Russian soil has put the Biden administration in an extremely awkward position. So Washington has, since the proxy war erupted, as we said, been wary of provoking retaliations um, from Russia against Western countries and their overseas assets and the conflict conflict spilling outside of Ukraine's borders. Russia has made repeatedly clear that it is, it is a unambiguous red line for direct Western involvement in this, even if it is illicit and covert. Um, adding to the empire's frustrations here, the Kursk adventure also allegedly torpedoed ongoing efforts to secure an agreement to halt strikes on energy and power infrastructure on both sides. So this was reported by Washington, the Washington mm -hmm. Post. Allegedly, Qatar was taking the lead in, yeah, so here we are, here we are, and was taking the lead in brokering these talks. Now, um, Ukraine faces an kind of unimaginably harsh winter. Russia has basically destroyed Ukrainian power generation, um, which means that they are already suffering rolling blackouts. They uh, they suffer from a, a total lack of, of heating and light. Uh, I, 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 I read a report from someone who's still in Ukraine who states that like all food is just going bad immediately because they don't have fridges and like and blah blah. It has spurred even more people to flee or attempt to flee Ukraine because conditions are getting unlivable. Now Ukraine has just sabotaged attempts to prevent this from getting worse, right when we're heading rapidly into the, the winter period, or this summer does feel rather endless here in um, here in Serbia, where temperatures routinely hit 40 degrees a day. Now um it, 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 the, the, again, the US is clearly very unhappy about this. And Russia has, uh, I mean, Putin has explicitly stated that Ukrainian actions in Kursk mean there is now no scope for any negotiated settlement at all, which is to say Russia will only accept Ukraine's unconditional surrender. Um, uh, but uh, the, the US also seems to have changed course as a result of this counter invasion. Now, um, on August 16th, the, again, the Times of London reported that the US had blocked Ukraine's use of British made long range storm shadow missiles, which they have a range of 250 miles um, a, a, against Russian territory. Now, the, the 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 previous time report that we've been the times of what we've been discussing, which reveals that Kursk was a British adventure, um, states that securing Western backing 
for strikes inside Russia using Western-made weapons is a core objective of Starmer um, and John Healy. Now, they already seem to have completely screwed themselves by going ahead with this counter-invasion. Um, and like, I think there are other indications that, 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 that um, uh, other proxy war sponsors are changing course as well. Um, it was quietly reported on August 17th that the German finance minister, Christian Lindner, has ceased all new military aid to Ukraine as part of a wider initiative to slash government spending. Um, this is three days after the Wall Street Journal published this very bizarre kind of James Bond style fiction of how Nord Stream 2 was allegedly bombed in the greatest and gravest example of industrial uh, sabotage in modern history, uh, um, which uh, the the culprits have been unidentified for uh, ever since it occurred in, in 2022. Um, although we can kind of guess at like who was behind this. Uh, the Wall Street Journal also claimed that um, because there's no paper trail and there's no um, ev there's no evidence that would stand up in court, no Ukrainian officer will ever stand trial. So that rather conveniently ensures that Zelensky and his 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 uh, band of merry men are not going to be in the dock anywhere uh, for allegedly having done this. But it does also give Germany a pretext for ceasing aid to Ukraine. Now, I strongly suspect that the U.S. has had enough of Britain escalating. Like we at Active Measures have consistently discussed how Britain has been the driving force between major escalation in the proxy war. Britain was behind the bombing of Kerch Bridge. I strongly suspect they were actually responsible for bombing Nord Stream 2. It has been reported, um, and I tend to, tend to think this is not just a, a cover story or limited hangout, that the US was very angry about the bombing in Kerch, of Kerch Bridge and the bombing of Nord Stream, which they knew about in advance, because they knew that this would mean to lead to a major escalation. Um, and it did, um, it, particularly in the case of Kerch Bridge, which started these strikes on Ukrainian infrastructure, which, you know, today that the, the legacy of this is absolutely devastating, um, could cost lives. Now, yeah, so I, I think that also just sorry, just to add as well, the, the BBC reported in December 2022 that British officials were worried about the Biden administration's quote unquote caution and were seeking to stiffen US resolve at all levels via pressure. So the, the British have been the ones like ratcheting this up, um, making this even more dangerous by the day with all of their belligerent conniving activities. I think that it's reached the point that the US has had enough and is basically reining them in. Um, that's encouraging, if I'm right. And again, I'm usually only ever wrong when I think I've made a mistake. But at the same time, uh, even if the empire is refusing to take the bait now, um, that might not be enough to curb London's belligerent fantasies. And uh, the, the British are unlikely to allow the US to step back from this without a fight. Now, this raises the prospect of the, the British pulling off some crazy strike inside Russia or uh, trying to open a second front elsewhere. Again, as we've discussed before, the Balkans is crawling with tens of thousands of British peacekeepers who are allegedly there to guard against Russian invasion, despite the fact it is British soldiers who have invaded and occupied these lands. Without and nobody, nobody wants them here, apart from the corrupt governments which are full of British assets. Um, so, um, yeah, uh, it, 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 encouraging, but also uh, cause for anxiety and well, worry as ever. That's 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 what we deliver you. Active measures. We like. <laughs> I would just you know cap that off by saying that there's a certain kind of twisted logic to Britain taking a PR lap and really promoting the idea that they facilitated and supplied this invasion of Russia. Um, because if Russia is to retaliate against a British installation, uh, Britain is one of the few American allies which are considered indisposable. Uh, I'm sorry. Yeah, indisposable. Like, the, you know, it. there are a lot of countries that the U.S. might say, oh, well, we'll cut our losses if they're attacked. Mm. We're not going to defend them. Um Britain is a major satellite, and mm -hmm. I think that a an attack on a British installation could cause 
an escalation from the United States. Hey everyone, um, if you enjoyed this video or, or any of our other content, uh, please give us a follow on Twitter or subscribe to us on YouTube. It will help us beat the algorithm oligarchs. Thank you.